Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm going to talk about a documentary, something I don't normally talk about on this channel, um, but I want to talk about this documentary I watched, Electric Boogaloo, not the, the Break-In movie, <laughs> or Break-In 2 really, but this is called Electric Boogaloo, it is the basically the rise and fall of Canon Films, if you don't know what that is, they make a lot of low budget, crappy schlock movies from the 80s, and basically are infamous for making some of the worst movies you've probably seen uh, for the adults, older people out there. Uh, probably seen growing up like a lot of Chuck Norris films, the later Death Wish movies, uh, Masters of the Universe, and stuff like that. But before I get into talk about the documentary, I want to let you guys please follow me on all my socials, Instagram, follow me on X, Letterbox. all those links will be down in the description below. Um, also, check out my podcast, The Real Late Podcast. You can find that on Spotify. Uh, I talk about movies that I don't normally talk about on the channel, maybe five minutes or less. So please check that out. That would help me out a lot. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get into the video. Yeah, the documentary basically starts from like the beginning, before the company was really canon, and then uh, was start about um, Golden, Golden and Globus, who basically took over canon in its infancy and basically turn it into what we know today or what we knew today can it's no longer companies no longer around anymore um, basically just fell off in the the later part of the 80s because they didn't make a lot of their money back spending money where it was unneeded just pumping out shitty after shitty movie back to back to back and so uh, there's quite a few people you might recognize uh, Cassandra Peterson uh, Peterson who um, is you know Elvira um, some uh, other people, Alex Winters, who is the uh, in the Bill and Ted movies, he's also directed some movies of his own, um, and a whole bunch of other people behind the scenes who worked for for them uh, during that time. And this is actually a pretty interesting documentary. It goes through everything. It talks about what they what they would do to kind of schmooze people into buying their stuff, what their uh, what it was like on the sets of their movies, and uh, stuff like that. And it's, you know, it's about an hour and a half long. It's, you know, it's a entertaining enough movie or entertaining enough documentary. It goes through a lot of information. And if you're a real movie buff, if you've seen a lot of the movies that it talks about, like I said, it listed some, you know, Master of the Universe, a lot of the death, the later Death Wish movies, um, Chuck Norris's uh, Missing in Action, those type of movies, Delta Force, and, you know, just stuff like that. Just very schlocky, very over the top, goofy movies um, that you probably saw at a Blockbuster or later on, as I later on in the 90s, you probably saw it at a Blockbuster. Um, I can see a lot of it on the straight to DVD bin at Walmart if they still have those at Walmart. Um, but yeah, the, it's, it's a fun documentary. There's a lot of people talking about you know their experience and what it was like and everything. And so I think that was more interesting, more insightful about what the process was, what it was really like. Cause what we see is like, oh, it's just a bad movie that got made, but what was the real shit show behind it? It wasn't just like, oh, nothing bad would happen, nothing was going wrong, we didn't go over budget, people didn't show up for set, stuff went missing. Like, it was a shit show from its beginning all the way to the end, and the result was ultimately um, less than satisfactory uh, when it comes to the box office. There's a couple of hits that they had in there. Um, uh, I think one of the... Uh, Missing in Action movies. I think the second one, I think that was a big hit for for them. Um, Masters of the Universe, that was one that was kind of put a lot of effort in, but ultimately it just, the, the scope was just not there. Um, Superman, that one um, was a big thing. They got the, the rights to Superman and they had a fraction of the budget what they had. Originally it was gonna be cost like $30 million and then it cut to 17 million, so almost almost half of what it was going to be and so you know that 30 million dollars would go far back then 30 million dollars that's like a that's a low budget indie film now so it tells you how far we've come in the making of cinemas and big budget movies and, and so this is kind of it's kind of cool when you hear the the goings on the behind the scenes and what the real story about these guys and how their tactics were a little shady and the people that they brought in were shady and how they were just pumping out movies they were more worried about pumping out a movie and making movies than what they said in the documentary. Um, Golan, 
uh, my Maniam, Maniam. There's two Jewish guys. So if I say the name wrong, I think his name is Maniam. He was um, he was talking to people and basically he was making up just pitches on the spot. They say, "Oh, we're gonna have this movie with Chuck Norris and he's in the jungle fighting gorillas and you know there's Tarzan shows up. It's like what the fuck are you talking about?" And and so that was the kind of stuff they were going in basically totally blind. They just had a poster. And we have an actor we wanted and a poster. And this is the movie. No script, no nothing. They didn't even know if Chuck Norris was going to be in the movie. But they were going to call him and say, hey, we got you for this movie. <laughs> That's basically how they ran their business for many years until it finally crashed. Um, but I will say, I will say some of those movies I have seen and some of them are, they are entertaining in a goofy way. I don't know, Flash Gordon, I think Flash Gordon may be New World Pictures. I think so. I don't. I don't know if that's officially canon, but it feels like a canon movie. But I do like Flash Gordon. Um, I was going to talk about that a while back, but I might talk about that uh, again soon. But uh, I really dug this film. I encourage you to check it out. It's free on Tubi to watch, so please check that out on Tubi. It's called Electric Boogaloo. Um, you can probably find it on there. Um, also, another one that was popular. That's what it's named after. Uh, the Break In movies was the first like breakdancing movie. They actually got it out before a big studio put it out. They were going to call theirs was called Beat Street, and they put out Breakin before that. And then as soon as Breakin was a hit, they're like, "Oh, we got to make a sequel." And they called Breakin Two, Electric Boogaloo. That's what they called the document. So just quit a little quick information there. So I encourage you to check it out. It's free. It's not going to cost you anything. And uh, yeah, um, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you. Bye.